The 2023 NBA regular season is officially over, so all of the production, evidence, and performances that voters for the awards take into account from the players are finalized. Based solely on what has gone down this season, we have arrived at the time for award picks to be submitted, and this year there was definitely a lot of tight competition for each category. In this video, we'll be going through every major NBA award, picking who I believe should win each one, an explanation for why, and then a brief discussion about two runners-up for each category that finished right behind the winners. Specifically, we'll be going through the sixth man, the most improved player, the rookie of the year, the defensive player of the year, and the MVP. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I would also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. The first award up is the sixth man of the year, and my pick for who should come away with it this year is Emmanuel Quickly of the New York Knicks. This is an incredibly tight race because admittedly, him and Malcolm Brogdon of the Boston Celtics are neck and neck for it and it could truly go either way, but there are a few reasons why I lean towards Quickly here ever so slightly. Both Quickly and Brogdon scored the same amount of points per game off the bench, they dished out a very similar amount of assists per game, and grabbed an identical number of rebounds. Brogdon was definitely the more efficient scorer, but Quickly was the more dynamic scorer, and most important of all, is that Quickly's impact off the bench actually improved the Knicks far more than Brogdon's impact did to the Celtics. The Knicks performed a highly impressive 8.5 points better per 100 possessions with Quickly in the game, compared to when he was not in the game, showing that he subs in and takes them to another level, and that they are at their best with him on the court. On the flip side, when Brogdon subs into the game, the Celtics are actually 2.7 points worse per 100 possessions compared to when he's on the bench. As for the runners up here, obviously I just spent amount of time talking about Brogdon, and the other one worthy of getting a few votes is Bobby Portis. Portis gives the Bucks very strong minutes off the bench as a stretch four who crashes the glass hard and grabs a ton of rebounds in limited minutes. He scored about 14 points a night and grabbed just shy of 10 rebounds rebounds per game as well, serving as a double-double machine in the minutes that he got. The next award up is the most improved player, and my winner this season is Laurie Markkinen of the Utah Jazz. Until this season, Markkinen's career was headed in the wrong direction. He showed flashes of star potential early on in his career in Chicago, but then he started struggling with injuries, which then affected his ability to perform consistently, and from there his production wavered. Last season, he was in Cleveland looking for a fresh start, and in his role as a floor spacing forward, he saw his scoring start to slightly go back up again, but he still wasn't shooting the ball that well overall, and his shot creation was only relied upon very sparingly, so the fact that he then arrived in Utah this year ready to fully emerge as a breakout star legitimately came out of nowhere. He took the reins of the Jazz offense and produced at a level that very few others in the league are even capable of producing at, as he put up about 26 points and 9 rebounds per game while shooting the ball an impressive 50% from the field and 39% from three. He kept defenses honest with his ability to shoot from deep, and then took advantage of mismatches with his ability to put the ball on the floor and attack off the dribble. As for the runners-up in this category, we have Shea Gilgis-Alexander and Jalen Brunson. It was hard to narrow it down to just two runners-up for this because so many breakouts occurred this year, but from start to finish this season, these two took their games to another level. Brunson stepped out of Luka Doncic's shadow to take the Knicks to another level as a serious playoff contender, and SGA was the fourth leading scorer in the entire league this season and led the way for a surprisingly good Thunder team to make it to the play-in tournament, so both are strong nominees for this award as well. The next award up is the Rookie of the Year award, and the winner this season is going to be Paolo Banquero of the Orlando Magic. 
Paolo has been sitting in the driver's seat for this award from the start of the season all the way until the end, and honestly, this is the award that was probably the most cut and dry. This isn't to say that there weren't other rookies that impressed this season, but Bancaro's season-long production trumps everyone else's by a pretty sizable margin. On the year, he put up averages of about 20 points and 7 rebounds per game, using his impressive combination of size and skill to overpower opponents and finish with touch around the basket. He will need to continue to work on his perimeter shooting, as that was admittedly a bit underwhelming for him, but all in all, his rookie season got his career off on the right track, and as the number one pick in the draft, he's looking to have a bright future. Now, as for the runner-ups for this award, we have Jalen Williams and Walker Kessler. In the second half of the season, Williams for the Thunder did his absolute best to take a charge at the top spot for this award as he really seemed to figure things out and dominate on a nightly basis in that span. On the year as a whole, he averaged about 14 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists, but then from the trade deadline onward, he averaged about 19 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists per game while shooting the ball red hot from all areas, making 55% of his shots in that span and 40 percent of his threes in that span. He may not win the award this year, but he is definitely going into next season ready for a massive breakout. Then, Walker Kessler for the Jazz was one of the more unheralded rookies this season, but he replaced Rudy Gobert as the Jazz starting center and provided elite shot blocking and rebounding. The next award up is the Defensive Player of the Year award, and my pick this year is Jaron Jackson Jr. of the Memphis Grizzlies. This is another award that has been a very tight race at the top, but Jaron's work anchoring a top three defense in the league while making history in the process gives him the edge here. As I mentioned, the Grizzlies are the third ranked defense as a team, and with Jaron on the court, the Grizzlies perform a whopping 11.7 points better per 100 possessions, further demonstrating how crucial he is to their success. Players that shoot at the rim when he is down there guarding the basket also shoot 14.6 percent worse compared to shots at the rim that they take against other rim protectors, which again is a huge swing, emphasizing how imposing of a presence he is in the paint. He led the league in blocks, swatting three of them per game. He had a block percentage that ranked historically amongst the best the league has seen, and his ability to cause havoc inside is worthy of the Defensive Player of the Year award. Now, as for the runners-up here, we have Brooke Lopez and Evan Mobley. Lopez just had his best defensive season ever, and while Giannis Antetokounmpo gets a lot of the credit on that end for the Bucks' defense, Brooke Lopez's work inside makes life hell for opposing scorers, and that has been vital to the team's success too. As for Evan Mobley, he is probably the most versatile defender in the NBA at the current moment, and is the one of the leading reasons why the Cavaliers are the league's number one ranked defense this season. He defends most perimeter shots for a big man in the entire league, and is in the top 10 for shots defended on the inside, so he covers a ton of ground, and does it at an absolutely elite level. And now, the final award we've all been waiting for is the big one being the league's MVP, and my pick this year is Joel Embiid of the Philadelphia 76ers. This was, without question, the tightest MVP race we've had in a very long time, with three legitimately worthy candidates that all have real cases to take home the award. Joel Embiid, however, just had a season on both ends of the floor, dominating at an absolutely historic level. Joel Embiid led the league in scoring again this season, putting up 33.1 points per game, which is a number that has only been bested all time by historic greats such as Will Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, James Harden, Elgin Baylor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Rick Barry, Bob McAdoo, and Nate Archibald. The catch, though, is that Joel Embiid this season was more efficient scoring the ball than all of them according to true shooting percentage, making this one of the greatest scoring seasons we have ever seen. Plus, mind you, Embiid did this while anchoring a top 10 ranked defense in the league. He was also one of the most clutch players in the league this season, hitting about six game-winning shots in crunch time and coming through on countless occasions with game-saving blocks and defensive plays. Embiid's work on both ends of the floor was genuinely top-notch, and he led his Sixers team to a top three record in the whole NBA. And when the race is as tight as it is this year, the entire body of work on both ends of the floor needs to be taken into account.
Now, as for the runners-up for this award, the two obvious names right behind Embiid are Nikola Jokic and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Jokic was looking like the favorite to three-peat for this award for a while, but he hit a rough patch late in the year, and he got outplayed by Embiid head-to-head, -head, which could have been the finishing blow. He's an all-time offensive talent, but his work defensively leaves a lot to be desired, and that kind of a weakness can make the difference in a tight race like this. Giannis would be my second-place pick for this one, because he did his work for a team with the best record in the league, and he dominates both ends as well. But Embiid has him beat as a scorer, and Giannis has missed the most games of these three players in contention, so that also could be the slight difference maker. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below who your picks for each award are this season. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.